What's going on, you guys? I'm back with another fun JavaScript demo this week. I'm going to be teaching y'all how to start making your very own Discord chatbots. I set out to do this over the Thanksgiving holidays when I had some spare time. And I always thought it'd be really difficult to do. It would require a lot of in-depth knowledge and coding, but it ended up actually being really easy. So let's go ahead and jump on in. First off, we're going to have some requirements to this demo. You're going to have to have at least a passing familiarity with Discord and how the servers work. You're going to obviously have to have a Discord login that you've already created, right? You've registered as a user. And you're going to have to have Node installed on your computer. Those are the three things you need to get up and running here. So let's try and jump on in and get this sucker off the ground. So I'm already logged in to my Discord username here. And I'm on the front page of discordapp.com. In their nav bar, they have a developer's portal we can go into where we can create our application, which will become our bot. So this is where I'm going to create an application. And I'm going to give it a cool avatar of me in my Obi-Wan Kenobi costume, because that's always a good avatar to have. And we're going to call this the, let's see, Obi bot. Yeah, Obi bot sounds good. Obi-Wan Kenobi bot. That's the whole point of it. There we go. And we're going to save these changes. And now we have created this application with this name and icon. And this is actually the client ID of how we invite this application, aka bot, into our server. Next, we have to actually tell this application that it's going to be a bot, right? So we're going to add bot here in the bot tab of the developer's portal. Go ahead and do it. It's going to inherit that avatar and name. We're going to call it obibot still. That's all good. And this hidden key right here, which I'll be re-rolling after this video to make sure y'all can't attempt to troll me with a login. Um, this is the secret key that our bot will be using to log in in our code. Now that we've established, established that this guy is a bot, we actually have to invite him into our Discord server. So I actually have one that I've made called Luke's Playground here, where I test code snippets and markdown and goof off, and I mean testing these bots just to make sure I don't spam my main work channel with all this stuff going on. Um, with this channel, I mean, all you have to do is click this plus icon in the Discord app itself to create a free new channel that you can be the admin of. And this is where we're going to be inviting our bot and testing out our messages in our chat channel. So to invite them, to invite my bot here, I would go to this OAuth2 tab right here. And as you can see, that client ID is what we're going to be inviting, and the scope will be as a bot to our program. And you'll notice it conveniently produces this URL right here, which I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste it into our URL bar up here. And what this actually does is it takes us to an area that's authorized us as a user of a channel to invite this OBBot application into our channel. So I'm going to select my Luke's Playground channel and authorize him to pop in. Beep, boop, beep. I'm not a robot, but the bot is, or will be rather when I code it. And we're authorized. We're in. That's it. Um, we should be able to go to our channel, and there he is. Obibot has joined the channel right there and is currently offline, but he is now an authorized user. And there's a nice welcome message saying, cheers, love, Obibot is here. So that's step one. Um, fairly simple. Took me a few minutes to figure that out at the Thanksgiving break, and I love the documentation for the API that Discord has. It is fantastic, and if you check it out, it'll help illuminate a lot of what we're doing here. But I'll be showing you just the basics to get up and running off the ground. Cool, so the other thing we'll need before I exit out of here will again be this bot's hidden token, but we are going to discuss that in just a minute. On the flip side of things, on the code side, so now that we have our bot hooked in, we have to go and use something called discord.js, which will be the module, the node module we'll be using to build out this application. And as a matter of fact, we'll be pretty much building this basic example they have here. And I'll try to explain of what's going on under the hood so we can understand what's happening and start building and bringing life to our bot. So I'm going to open up my terminal here, and I think I have a, yes, I have a directory ready to go called Discord bot. Makes sense to me. Yeah. And we're going to create a new node project in this directory by doing npm init. And I'm not going to fill out this package contents name. I'll do that later. I'll just keep this video a bit shorter, so I'm not going to fill all that stuff out. So we can confirm we have our package JSON ready to go, and we're going to go ahead and install our first node module here called npm install dash dash save dot discord dot js. This will go out there and fetch this node module and install it for us. And once it's done installing, we are good to start coding, believe it or not. So I'm going to open up my code editor. There we go. And I'm going to create a new file, and I think it makes sense to call it bot.js, but we can call it whatever we want, ultimately. 
And first things first, we are going to need to import the Discord client module. So we're going to do Discord, const Discord is going to require, if I can type, <laughs> oh my goodness, if I can learn to type, discord.js module. So now I've successfully imported this module into this file and we can now start using stuff on it. So we're going to be creating a new client or bot or whatever variable you like to call. I'm going to call mine bot. And it's going to be a new instance of a discord.client class. Boom. We now have access to all the methods on Discord clients on our bot variable. So the first one we're going to be messing with will be our client, aka bot. We'll have a dot login. There it is. IntelliSense is helping us out here since we connect. We have successfully made a new instance of our Discord client. And bot.login is one of the first things you're going to be messing with as this is how it will actually log into our server. And so it's a method and it will take a string argument and that string argument will be that secret key that I had showed you guys earlier. So back to our Discord tab here, I'm going to copy that secret key, come back to my code editor and paste it as a string. There we go, that is our secret key that our bot can now log in with. Now we could run node on our file here and have it be up and running and see our bot login, but let's actually make it do a couple really basic things before we keep going. I'm gonna have, so the bot, the client rather, it has a couple different things you can do. I'm gonna keep this demo really simple and I'll probably make this into a series of videos where we start adding some more functionality to our bots. But for now, I want it to do two basic things. When I run node on bot.js, I need a confirmation message saying we are online, ready to go and start listening for commands. And I also want another event where if, a, if I message into my Discord channel, the phrase, Kenobi or Obi-Wan or something like that, I want it to respond with a message of its own. I want it to be listening for a specific command. So let's start with the first one. We can do client or bot in my case dot on, which is an event listener for our client. And the event we're listening for is going to be ready. Now this will be a lot like what you did in DOM and jQuery, where you had an API on the DOM that had an event listener with various events. The client it functions similarly with the way they coded this particular node module, which is really cool. So uh, the event type is ready, AKA when the bot is logged in, the file is running and it's online. It's going to be an anonymous callback function with no argument. And all it's gonna do is it's gonna console.log bot online. Nothing fancy, it's just a visual cue that our bot is online and ready inside of our terminal. And that's it. That's all you have to do for ready, and you can make it as fancy or as simple as you want, but we're going to keep it simple for this video. So we can have a different type of event, so a bot.on, and the event type will be message, and that's when something is either directly sent to our bot via a DM or something, some kind of text content in our channel, right? When I type into the Discord server channel, that's what a message is. And the message is going to be the argument of this event, and because it's our sole argument, we can get away with some ES6 syntax and not have parentheses around our function argument here. Now the message is yet another class in the Discord JS modules and the um, Discord API. And it has several things on it that we want to mess with. So earlier when I had said that this particular bot's purpose is that if it gets some kind of message, I want it to respond with its own message. Like if it sees some kind of command, it responds to it. So we're gonna start ourselves out with an if statement here because we don't want him randomly spamming our channel in an infinite loop by accident, right? And it's going to be if our message, and again, because I said the message is a class that has class objects on it, it has one called dot content, as you can see IntelliSense finishing that for us there. It has a dot content that is actually the content of the message inside of our channel or DM. So this is the actual content. What did I type? The literal physical characters that I typed in there. If that message is equal to a certain string, and let's say it's gonna be exclamation point Kenobi, something like that, right? Uh, I put the exclamation point in there because typically your bot will want to respond with some kind of special prefix or command that the bot is accustomed to seeing. Um, we don't have to have it in there if you want it to respond just to the plain text Kenobi, but if someone's typing a long message that happens to mention Kenobi a bunch of times, it could trigger our bot randomly, which maybe you want, or if you want to, again, make it seem more bot-like, it typically has a prefix command that you utilize. I'm going to hard code it in this string for now, but in the next videos, I'll actually show you how to make this a bit more sleek and customizable. 
So the next part is, say, we're going to have our message class again. Our message class can have several targets, whether it's an author of the person who made the channel or who made the comment or the DM, or it can be to the general channel. And that's the one we want to go to. So we want to say, when I type in exclamation point Kenobi, I want it to spit out into the channel a message. And so then in that channel, we're going to send, which is a method on the message class and channel, and we can send a string message. And you guessed it, he's going to say, may the force be with you, just like Obi-Wan Kenobi would. There we go. And believe it or not, this is all we need to get our bot up and running from a node project and responding to us inside of our Discord channels. So let's give her a shot and see what errors I messed up. Node on bot.js, enter. So the dot login is a promise, which is why you didn't see the dot ready, the, um, the on ready fire right away. It took a second for this login to be validated, which is a promise. So if we could chain a dot then on this login if we wanted to. But since the bot is logged online and ready, we got the bot online confirmation message right here from the bot on ready event listener. And now let's go test our message event listener. So let's come back into my Discord channel. OB bot is online. You can see he went from the offline back to the online. And we're going to type in exclamation point Kenobi and let's see what happens. May the force be with you. Thanks, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Appreciate that. And yeah, that's it. That's at its simplest how you can get a Discord channel bot running up and running in no time whatsoever. Um, in the future set of videos, I will show you guys how to do a couple cool, sleek things inside of your on-message listeners here where we can accept multiple arguments and we can customize our prefix and also keep it hidden away from our GitHub messages or our GitHub commits rather. So someone can't find our special prefix and start trying to mess with our hidden commands if we have any. So I'll see you all in the next video. And until then, happy hacking and bring some bots to life and share them with me. If you guys are curious, if you guys want to show them off, invite me to your channels. Let me come play with them. And I'll have some links in the video description of where to go to the documentation for Discord.js and for Discord itself. Until next time.